Dan Graham's two-way mirror, curved hedge, zigzag labyrinth of 1996 was a site-specific commission intended from its conception to enhance the paved plaza to the east of the Center for the Arts. Gifts from two foundations, complemented by two endowed acquisition funds, enabled its purchase. Our pavilion occupies a realm between sculpture and architecture and invites active participation from its beholders. Graham is a bold and gifted manipulator of public spaces who has animated the piazza by integrating this work with its surroundings. The title is simultaneously descriptive and elusive. The glass surely serves as a two-way mirror, and a significant portion of it is curved. The compositional hedge zigzag of steel glass and vegetation may allude to traditional labyrinths, but it does not form one. Fittingly for its locale, the campus of a sophisticated institution in a sylvan environment, this pavilion combines high-tech materials with living forms, the trimmed hedges of Abor Vitae Nigra. Designed to be experienced in an environment from both inside and out, the work offers very different perceptions from these two vantages. We can always see through the glass, even as we also see ourselves and our environment reflected in it. The relative mix of reflections is, however, dependent on the degree and quality of the light at any given moment, as well as the beholder's location. The pavilion seems to have moods of its own, somber and subdued when overcast, romantically evocative in the gloaming, joyous and exuberant in full sunlight, mysterious, and perhaps even a bit threatening in the darkness when illuminated by artificial light. If we look at the flat glass panels, the reflections are straightforward, but in the curved surfaces, we experience significant distortions. Moving in and around the pavilion, we see ourselves reflected, both as we are and as mysterious doppelgangers, who have been transformed into fatter or thinner facsimiles than we might recognize as in a funhouse mirror. At the same time, we can never wholly isolate ourselves from the complex panorama of reflections and vistas seen through the glass. The building and its plaza, other viewers or passers-by, the landscape, playing fields, pond, and nearby sculptures, the sky and its clouds, all assert themselves in a shifting, complex interweaving of transformed sensations that include us. The architectural aspect of this pavilion suggests that it has a function, but no practical purpose can be ascertained. The vertical glass panels might shield us from a gust of wind, but openness to the heavens means that rain, sleet, and snow will fall with equal density within the enclosure and outside it. Beholders might choose to relax, converse, or make music within the confines of the pavilion, but ultimately it is a place where shifting perceptions produce sheer delight and where inner immaterial reflections mimic external physical ones.